We want to get straight to those questions. We're joined via video chat by Dr. Ken Stedman. He's a, bio he's a biologist at Portland State. And Dr. Stedman, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. These are questions our viewers have sent us. And we know you're an expert in the spread of viruses like the novel coronavirus. And we've heard a lot of theories about how this started. Can you tell us how this one got started? So exactly how it started, still nobody knows. But one of the great things about this particular coronavirus is it's got a really long sequence, about 300 letters that make up what makes it a virus. Really, it's, it's code, it's genome. And just by looking at those letters and comparing them to other viruses that are known, it's pretty clear that this coronavirus has come originally from bats, not absolutely directly from those bats, but the sequences are so similar to each other, there's got to be a bat connection there. Okay, and Dr. Sedman, I know a lot of people are stuck at home, a lot of people are ordering things online. So a big question we're getting, can the virus live on boxes from Amazon? So I'm not specifically going to talk about Amazon here, but <laughs> just boxes in general. Um, there was a nice study that was just, it's not been published, but it's almost out. Um, where people did a study literally with SARS-CoV-2, so the virus which is causing COVID-19, where they looked at the virus on cardboard and just looked to see how long it could actually survive under those conditions. And it turns out that it really wasn't that long. It was a few hours, and that was with a lot of virus that they put onto the cardboard in the first place. So I think the, the cardboard is really not an issue unless the person is delivering and just happens to have coughed on it right before they give it to you. Uh, but in general, I would say those packages are really very safe. There was a time not that long ago, a lot of people were concerned about Zika virus and mosquitoes passing that on. One of our viewers wants to know, can mosquitoes pass on the coronavirus? Absolutely not. Uh, this virus is a respiratory virus. You breathe it in and then it replicates in your lungs, and that's why people are having all these problems. It's a lung problem, but it does not get into your blood. And if it doesn't get into your blood, then there's no way for it to get into a mosquito. Now, mosquitoes are incredibly nasty for other kinds of diseases, but not for this one, thank goodness. Dr. Sedman, how long does the virus stay active once it's airborne? Oh, that's a really good question. Again, um, similar study, which was just put out. Um, this is what's called a preprint um, med archive, where they looked at in a very controlled condition exactly how long the virus could stay in very tiny particles. Um, and this is either um, droplets, again, the moisture that you produce. But it turns out that it's maybe half an hour, um, and at the very, very longest conditions, about three hours. But again, that was under completely controlled laboratory conditions. And so exactly how long it would last in the real world, out in the real environment, is still not entirely clear. But we do know that once someone coughs, they sneeze, it comes out of their mouth, this particle will drop to the ground very quickly. And that's the real reason we should have physical distance. Now, I don't like social distancing. It's physical distance we should be talking about. We want to be connected to each other socially. But that physical distance, that's what allows the particle to drop to the ground. And then if you don't breathe it in and you're not, as I mentioned before, not licking the floor, then I think we're pretty good shape. Well, gravity's our friend in that case. Patty wants to know, Dr. Stedman, if her pets can get the virus and if so, what she can do to keep them safe. So apparently um, pets cannot get the virus. And um, there was one case, I think, where someone was talking about dogs, but that's really questionable, I think, whether there actually was an infection in this case. And so we all love our pets. Um, and it really does seem that this particular virus, like most viruses, are pretty specific for one particular kind of thing they infect. So I mentioned the bats before. Bats have tons of coronaviruses. But the bats don't get sick. And that's probably what's happening in the case of this particular virus, the SARS-CoV-2, and your pets. In our last question, Dr. Sebin, we have been getting a lot of questions about cigarette smoke. Can the virus be transmitted through cigarette smoke or you know, vaping release? That really does not seem to be the case. It's, it, these are respiratory droplets. And one of the things about vaping and cigarette smoke 
those are very, very, very small particles, and even smaller particles, actually, than we're talking about in terms of what these respiratory droplets are likely to be. So if you think about smoke, it sort of you know, floats around for a while. That's not what happens with these respiratory droplets. They, as, as Laurel just said, gravity's our friend in this particular case. Too, and that's not so much the case for your cigarette or your vaping. Dr. Stedman from PSU, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. I'm sure we'll check in with you later on. Happy to do it. Thank you.